So it's that time of the year again, my favorite teching gear of 2023. I've been doing them every year for like three or four years now. And yeah, it's just my way of sharing teching gear that I've been using this year. They don't necessarily have to be brand new things that have come out this year. They're things that I've discovered that I'm using and really love and want to share. So first up, we have the LG OLED 240 Hertz monitor. I bought this monitor earlier this year for one sole reason, and that's for gaming. I've had my eye on it since the end of 2022 and was waiting for it to come into stock. And there's two main features of this monitor that I wanted. It's OLED and it's 240 Hertz. I've become a big PC gamer over the last couple of years, and I want the best monitor you can get and this is arguably right now the best gaming monitor for first person shooters, mainly because there's nothing else at this refresh rate, 1440p and also OLED. There are of course higher refresh rate monitors and higher resolution monitors, but this combination is what I specifically wanted. Playing games on this thing is just incredible. I've been primarily playing Overwatch on it and that 240Hz refresh rate, as well as the very minimal response time, makes it a smooth and very, very fun experience. The response rate specifically is very difficult to describe until you use the monitor yourself. The feeling of moving my mouse and it nearly feeling instant on the screen it's just incredible. With it being OLED, the contrast and the colors are obviously stunning. LG are already well known for their great OLED TVs, so having the same tech in a smaller gaming TV is great. Playing any game on it really looks fantastic. Of course, it's not 4K, so you are lacking the sharpness, but I don't mind as I'd rather have a higher refresh rate monitor over resolution. However, LG have announced that they're bringing a 4K 240Hz OLED monitor next year, and apparently it can also do 1080p at 480 hertz, which is just outrageous. This monitor is going to be absolutely crazy. However, I expect it to be very expensive as well, but I'm really looking forward to it because once that does get released, I will most likely be upgrading to that. Next up is my current daily driver, which is the iPhone 15 Pro. I'm actually not as impressed with this phone as I was making the jump from the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro. However, the iPhone is definitely the best all-rounder when it comes to photo and video, and it's why I've stuck with the iPhone for so many years. By the way, if you're interested in this wallpaper, I'll leave it linked down in the description below. It's like an iPod-inspired wallpaper for your lock screen. I think it looks fantastic. It's very clever. This year, Apple have switched from stainless steel to titanium, and I've gone with a lighter color iPhone for the first time ever. I've always gone with black or gray in the past, but seeing that natural titanium for me, I feel like it was just calling me. It just looked so good. Like I said though, the camera is what I'm here for. The photos that come out of the iPhone are just damn right fantastic. Granted, I do only shoot in Pro Raw and then edit them in Lightroom with my presets. But after doing that, they legit look like they're coming from a professional camera. It blows my mind at how good the pictures are. There's something about the way they're rendered that make them look high end. I find myself using my mirrorless camera less and less due to how good the camera is on this thing. This year also Apple introduced ProRes log functionality to video, so those who are into professional video know how much of a big deal this is. It means having the ability to shoot video that you can manipulate the contrast and the color of, it gives you a lot more control over the look of the footage compared to shooting normal video. I feel like some people like to describe it as cinematic, and I can completely see it. The iPhone video, when shooting in ProRes Log, there is something about it when you color grade it, when you get it looking the way you want, it can look cinematic. This leads us well into the Insta360 Flow, who are also sponsoring this video. If you really want to take your video creation to another level, the Insta360 Flow is an AI-powered gimbal that can make your footage look ultra smooth, whilst also giving you a bunch of other useful features. Deploying the gimbal is super fast. With the mount already attached to your phone, it magnetically attaches to the gimbal, and then you unfold the gimbal, turn it on, and you're ready to go. As well as being a gimbal for smooth footage, it can also act as a tripod with the integrated feet, and it can also double up as a selfie stick so you can get more into your shots. It has AI tracking, so you can track a subject and keep it in frame. You don't need a cameraman, this gimbal can do it for you. It has person identification, so you can keep it on one person, staying focused on them, even if another person comes into the shot. And there's always on tracking, so if you leave the frame or go behind an object, it will lock back on when you come back into shot. The smart wheel lets you control the gimbal in a number of ways, including hitting record, 
panning the gimbal and quickly rotating between horizontal and vertical. The trigger button can also do a bunch of stuff like recenter the gimbal and flip it around for selfie video or photo. So if you're looking for the best stabilizer for the iPhone, make sure to check out the Insta360 Flow. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. This is also the last day of the holiday sales where you can get a 12% discount, a free spotlight and a free t-shirt. So make sure to check it out. Next up is my Sonos surround system setup. So I love the idea of having a home cinema setup. However, I don't have a separate room which I can turn into a cinema system. So I have to use my living room. But then the issue is I don't want big sort of speakers left and right, big speakers behind me, big speakers in the ceiling, because obviously I have friends and family around. It just looks, it just doesn't look that great. So the only system that really makes sense for me and my personal setup is something like a Sonos surround system. I have the Sonos Arc soundbar, two rear Era 100 speakers, and the Sonos Sub Mini. And let me tell you, this setup is freaking incredible. Like it absolutely blows my mind how much sound and how incredible this sounds. Whenever I have friends around, I always get them to sit in the middle of the sofa, in the middle of the room, just to experience what it's like. And yeah, I've had quite a few friends where they've experienced it and they're like, okay, I need to get this. And they've actually gone out and purchased the same setup. I was so impressed by how much sound separation there is. I can clearly tell when sounds are coming off screen and are behind me. It is pretty much like having your own cinema system at home. The best thing about Sonos is how everything works wirelessly. I don't have to run wires to connect the rear speakers and the subwoofer to the soundbar. Now, of course, you do need to plug them in, but all of the speakers just work wirelessly together. It also looks very smart and minimal. So it's ideal for a living room like mine, where I don't really have space to hide wires and cables. And it also looks good when I have friends over. Of course, when I'm not watching anything, I can simply have it playing music. And because I have Sony speakers in every room of my house, it is just a great experience. I can just walk from room to room and have the music everywhere. And I can completely get why people rave on about Sonos now because it's just such an easy experience. Sonos speakers are no doubt pricey, but the overall experience that you get, I feel like it's so worth it. The Sony ZV-E1. So since May, most of the fancy B-roll shots that you see on this channel have been shot with this camera. This has become my favorite camera for YouTube videos. And the main reason being is that it's essentially an FX3 or A7S3 in a smaller body. It's lighter too, so I pretty much always have it in my backpack. It does have some downsides. It overheats quite quickly and there aren't enough buttons on it. I actually wouldn't recommend it as a starter camera. If you're looking for your starter YouTube camera, I don't think the Sony ZV-E1 makes sense. I think it makes more sense as a sort of B cam, one that goes alongside a bigger camera. But that full frame sensor and the quality of video that it puts out results in some amazing footage from such a small camera. It damn right amazes me that you can get cinema quality video from something so small and relatively affordable. So earlier this year, when I was planning my trip to Iceland, I knew that I'd be taking a lot of pictures. And I also knew that it's going to be very, very cold. So I was trying to figure out how can I keep my hands warm whilst I'm on this trip, but also be able to take pictures whenever I need to, take videos whenever I need to. And I was looking on Amazon and I was fully expecting buying some disposable hand warmers, ones that you sort of crack or you rewarm or whatever in like boiling them up. I don't even know how it works, but yeah, I actually ended up coming across these rechargeable hand warmers and I got them not really expecting much. However, they are so, so worth the money and they're just one of the best purchases that I've made all year. They are essentially rechargeable hand warmers that come in a pack of two. They can magnetically attach to each other for convenience. They're also fairly compact and will easily fit in most pockets. This one I have here has three different heat settings and will last up to six hours. I found the lowest setting to be more than warm enough. The highest setting almost feels like it's going to burn me, but I can completely get why they've done it because I can see the high setting being used for someone who wants to feel the warmth through gloves. Because there's two, I think the ideal setup is to put one in each pocket so that when you have your hands in your pockets, you can warm up each hand. Seriously, they're an absolute game changer. I don't know how I didn't know of them before. I can't recommend them enough. Next up is the Ultra Human Ring. And this is essentially a sort of sleep and health tracker. So I'm someone who doesn't like wearing my Apple Watch to the bed. I just find it a bit too big and bulky. And sometimes obviously I just need to charge it. So I don't want to charge it and then wear it. It's just a bit of a faff really. And this Ultra Human Ring is definitely a very, very good alternative to the Apple Watch. Like I said, this smart ring can track things like sleep and recovery. And what I love most about it is that it looks like any other ordinary ring. No one has been able to tell that I'm wearing a health tracker. It relies on an app to tell you everything. And in the app, you can see things like your movement performance, sleep performance, and recovery score. It's a really great way to keep an eye on your health. And it of course can sync everything with the Apple Health app. It feels like a very premium product. It's made from titanium, so it's super strong. If you're looking for an Apple Watch alternative, 
yeah, this is pretty sick. So I'm all about tech that fits in with its interior. I like tech that's aesthetically pleasing, that's designed to just look good. So I've always been a fan of Samsung's line of TVs where they do the Serif TV. The Serif TV especially is one of my favorites and they also do the Frame TV. I ended up getting a Frame TV sort of beginning of this year, end of last year. I set it up on my wall over there and I've put it amongst the sort of artwork on my wall and I think it looks awesome. I needed a TV for my studio that does a good job of blending in with the rest of my studio and this Samsung frame is the closest thing I could find. This is specifically the 32 inch version which is unfortunately 1080p. They do offer 4K models but only if you get a larger size. However, for me 1080p isn't an issue due to the environment that I'm using it in. It's very much an accent TV. I don't intend to sit here and watch it for hours on end. It's sort of used to view random stuff have stuff running in the background. I actually specifically bought it to watch the World Cup at the end of last year. And yeah, I was just watching matches whilst I was working. It's great. It mounts on the wall easily and it works with a one cable setup. The one cable is then connected to an external box where all of the ports are and where your power comes in. I have my Apple TV hooked up to it and it's actually great as the TV can even act as an external monitor to my Mac. So yeah, that's my favorite tech and gear of 2023. Some of the things that I've been using, some of the things that I really just wanted to share and I think are worth spending the money on. Please do leave in the comments below anything that you've bought this year, anything that you've started using this year that's really sort of become a part of your daily life. I'm really interested to hear what other people are purchasing because that's how I find a lot of my tech. That's how I find a lot of things that I sort of end up using day to day because other people recommend them. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.